Hey, welcome back. In the previous video, we learned how to display the content of pages, how to create templates, and how to set the blog and the home pages. For the time being, the home page looks good so far. However, every single part of this page is hard coded. So, in case the owner of the website doesn't know how to code, it won't be possible for them to make any customization, which is in fact against what a CMS such as WordPress was created for in the first place. So, in order to make this page dynamic, we need to make use of what is called custom fields in WordPress. So, let's say we want the admin of the website to change the title to what suits their need. The part of the page where the title is displayed therefore needs to be bound to a custom field, where the admin needs to type the title they want, and WordPress should take care of the rest. To do that, we need to go to the page editor, go to options, and then select custom fields. Now, to change the title, for instance, we need to create a name for the variable in which the title will be stored, and of course, provide the value which will be displayed on the page. The title haven't yet changed, because WordPress doesn't know where exactly to display it, so that said, we need to open the code of the page, and make a little change. So now instead of the hard coded title, we need to print the value returned by the get post meta hook. The first parameter of this hook is the ID of the page. The second one is the name of the variable that holds the value of the field. The last one is a boolean that indicates if the custom field value is an array or not, but most of the time you will have to use true. So let's go back to the page and refresh it and see if that works. We can add as many custom fields as we want, so let's add another one for the slogan. Although this seems like a good working solution, yet it's still very limited and can turn into a very tough task to do, because the user has to keep recreating custom fields for every single page, even if they are pretty much the same. In our case, we used custom fields in a simple home page. But, what if the website has hundreds of pages with the same custom fields? The admin would need hours to achieve such a repetitive task. The repetition of the task is not the only con, but also there is a big chance that the user types the wrong variable name, thus the value won't be shown on the page. So that being said, there is another alternative which is way effective and it manifests as a plugin. So let's restart from zero. Then let's go to the plugins section, hit add, then type advanced custom fields and install the first one. Once installed, we need to activate it. And there we go, we have a new section called custom fields on the sidebar. Let's add a new group, give it a name, and now we can choose on which page we want the group of custom fields to appear.
That done, let's start creating the fields. I'll start with the hero, which is the tab that contains the fields that are included in the hero section of the page. Now let's hit publish and open the home page editor. Now as you can see, the group in the tab show up. So let's continue with the fields. The first one of this section is the title, which is basically a string. The same thing goes for the slogan. The third part is a link to another page, thus the type of this field should be URL. And finally, the background, which should be an image. Now, time to fill out the fields with data, so let's start with the title. Nothing has changed, and you probably know why this time. So, let's open the code editor and type some code. To get the value of the title, we need to call the field hook and the parameter should be the name of the custom field. The field label here refers to the label on the editor, and the field name refers to the variable that holds the value of the field, and this is the one that we need to set as parameter for the hook. Now let's do the same steps to display the slogan. It's pretty much the same process for the consultations field. The image is a bit different since we need to set the value of the field into a new variable using the getField hook. This hook returns an array holding the information of the image such as the source and the alt attribute value.
Everything should be the same for the second section. So let's create another tab for the process section. Some parts of the text need to be different like the for free part and the first list item. We can do the same by typing HTML code within the fields. So this should be it for this video. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you in the next one.